Urgent just wants to reaction. This is why Europe is preparing for war. But I don't know what you think. It's been a while since I didn't know what you think video. And somehow I missed this one. It was two weeks ago. I should have, I guess around this time I was like watching like Enforcer and other updates in real time. But I don't know if this is about like Ukraine attacking Russia or like it's just like in general, you, uh, you know, analysis on Europe. Could be a general thing because that's, I don't know what you think does, know what you think doesn't like instantly creates updates and things so i'm guessing this is analysis of why europe is preparing for war uh, i remember how france was talking about like how it might join ukraine with the troops and things right they were talking about that uh poland is preparing obviously <laughs> if there is one country in europe that should prepare anytime shit goes down it's probably poland uh, one thing i've noticed like I, I didn't know much about european history before i started this channel I never like I don't know research like generally sure like World War and things generally but not in detail. The day I realized that like, Poland is the one punching back that everybody punches like regardless of like time right Catherine the Great now the World War Two like even before that like multiple times right Poland always gets screwed. So if there's one country that should prepare is Poland and I'm guessing yeah Poland is properly prepared right. Uh, same thing with the France like uh, Germany right Germany is also like ramping things up. So I'm guessing that this is going to be summary of that, I guess. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Let's do it. Remember, we'll flag my next one. Don't subscribe. So that way, I know which type of videos to react to more. I'll react to quite a few. Know what you think videos. It's like great channel talking about like different uh, tech of things like, you know, ships and designation of ships and he actually physically goes to ships, which is like even better. He made a few videos of that, which is it's like literally first account of like how all this works which not many videos like that right i'm pretty sure not like that at least so that's really great i hope he goes to like at least he's allowed to go to some kind of a big ass aircraft carrier and things like that i don't know if he would be allowed to go to ford class because that would be like new there would be classified shit there but maybe the old one i don't know but yeah let's watch one the UK would only be able to fight Russia for two months, according to the country's deputy chief of the defense staff. The UK military couldn't fight Russia for longer than two months. What the f What? Really? Okay, one thing I've noticed with the NATO is that most of the NATO countries rely heavily on the US. It's like, you're like one of the top economies. The UK is like, what, fifth, sixth or something? Uh, Germany is like third. Like, you should like, how are you not spending enough for like, uh, money in your military that you're not prepared right and you're like relying a lot of you on us type of way i'm guessing this is similar to that because two months that's insane right and germany could do so only for two days due to the lack of you're the what you're the third biggest economy right yeah usa china germany pretty sure it's germany third germany's third how the fuck you can only fight for two days what you doing munition on hand this is while the world. I guess it's because, like, post World War II, they demilitarized most of the thing until they're now like, oh, wait a minute, we need to militarize even more type of way. I'm guessing it's mostly that. Because Germany is the third economy. Are you kidding me? They could, they could prepare really well. The geopolitical situation is the worst it's been in over three decades, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Israel fighting Palestine, and all trends pointing to China trying to take over Taiwan in the near future. As a response to the situation, across the board, we're seeing the European continent focusing on rearming itself in preparation for a potential war and to fix the decades-long decline in Europe's collective firepower. But how Europe's military power deteriorated to this point, why 11 European countries are purchasing F-35s, and why most European countries produce and use the same 155mm artillery shell for their militaries is not what you think. Same. Everyone remembers the Cold War, when NATO and the Soviet Union were expected to fight it out in a war that would leave us all playing Fallout in real life. That's During that time, up. both the Soviet Union and Europe constructed massive armies with the latest and greatest military technology they could get their hands on. Thankfully, World War III never kicked off but it left Europe with massive stockpiles of weapons and equipment. With the lack of an existential threat in their backyard, European nations no longer felt the need to spend significant chunks of their country's economies on the military. Plus, they still had all the leftover gear from the Cold War, 
so replacing perfectly good equipment wasn't a priority. But now over 30 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall and war raging on, Europe's military equipment has aged and more importantly, their ammunition stockpiles are running dry. The European nations have donated billions of dollars worth of arms, ammunition and equipment to Ukraine. But this has depleted ammo reserves at home. One specific area is with artillery ammunition. Most of Europe uses the NATO standard 155mm artillery shell. But these have become dangerously scarce since the Russian invasion. At the start of 2022, European production of 155mm artillery shells hovered at about 230,000 rounds per year. In 2023, production increased to 400,000 annually, sparked by the Russian invasion. Europe is expected to hit 1 million artillery rounds per year by the end of 2024 and 2 million by 2026. However, the vast majority of these rounds are on their way to Ukraine under the Act in Support of Ammunition Production Program, or ASAP. Most of Europe and NATO using the same 155mm artillery shell isn't just a coincidence. In the event of NATO's Article 5 being enacted and all member states being brought into war at once, each of Europe's militaries will have to fight as a joint force not just as a collection of small... Me, everybody has their job type of way, right? Everybody chooses a niche, like how they're going to support in NATO alliance, which is like, like I said in one of the videos, like it's like strength and weaknesses. What if somebody says, fuck it, I'm not joining. Nothing really forces anybody to join. But yeah, in a way, it's efficient. I guess it kind of makes sense. And artillery, like 2026. So like, they already like knew like, oh, this was going to stretch out and like, we're going to need a lot of artillery, which is something because what is Russia is like two, three million a year, right? They have the largest uh, production or something as far as I remember, well, I'm pretty sure it was the same now what you think channel, which basically made that video where like Russia is making like a few million a year artillery, right? Also getting from North Korea now. So it's like a lot of artillery basically. So yeah, the, Europe is like amping up, US is amping up armies but essentially operating as one large army. This means that standardization of equipment is vital in order to ensure that logistics doesn't become a nightmare. Yeah, basically America is to drive in UK, everybody's driving left. Yeah, okay. Every time you I play Euro Truck Simulator, that's the issue, right, in the game. Whenever you get to England, you have to drive on left, which is the same way we let, drive in India. But yeah, wouldn't that be an issue? Like, uh, you know, some kind of a major war scenario where everybody has to cooperate. Some of like people transport things <laughs> that they have to drive left now instead of right and shit. So they need equipment like that as well. Like, you know, steering on the right side type of shit. I guess that's not that important. But yeah, there must be like, British are like UK still uses Imperial rather than metric. While most of the Europe, Europe uses metric, America uses Imperial as well, not metric. Which is like, I don't know. I guess some of the things are turning metric now, right? Some of the military things, science-related things are turning to metric, and modern military is mostly science, like, it was always science, but like mostly relying on science nowadays with the drones and shit, so yeah, it's kind of turning metric anyway. NATO standardization allows for supplies from one country to be used by another. For example, the 5.56mm round fired from the British L85A3 is the same round fired from the French FAMAS and the German G36. But it's not just ammunition that's seeing NATO standardization. Army. Enter the F-35. NATO and EU members have recently spent significant amounts of money on bringing their air forces into the next generation with more interoperability than ever before. 2024 marked the first year that NATO countries across the board hit the required 2% of GDP spending on defense, and much of that has gone towards upgrading their fleets of aircraft. So far, 600 F-35 Lightning II multi-role fighters have been ordered by a total of 11 European countries. Ten of these nations are part of NATO, with Switzerland's order of 36 being the odd one out. Spending $6.25 billion on fifth-generation fighter jets for the sake of neutrality is an interesting move for Switzerland, 
but I'm sure. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Swiss knows in modern world, who knows how things gonna go. So far, they've been neutral. Wait a minute, British are doing the Russia time. They they, they they broke the neutrality, right? Like they condemned Russia or something like that. Like they actually pitched in, right? There was news like that. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know. But yeah, they know like they, they they have to like arm themselves the latest tech, even if they're gonna be neutral. Because back back then, like Switzerland was like a geographically odd place. Like why would Germany and other places invade Switzerland, which was the fear. So Switzerland could stay neutral. But in modern world, like geographical limitation might not be as strong in, in many elements, at least. Uh, at least by the damage factor, like you can still attack Switzerland, even if you don't want to capture it type of way. So they have to like have f 35s and things. Yeah, for the defense, it makes sense. Or they have their reasons. The decision across the board to adopt the F-35 will help streamline logistics. This will allow for more flexibility with maintenance and provide redundancy for the different air forces if attrition rates begin to rise. The reason Europe has put a bigger emphasis on its air force is largely due to Russia's advantages in the world of hypersonic missiles, giving them the ability to strike targets too quickly to intercept. Buying stealth aircraft capable of carrying cruise missiles allows Europe to gain a similar ability to strike targets in contested airspaces without having to wait the years it will take to develop and build their own hypersonic arsenal, which they are doing too. In 2024, the UK pledged $1.26 billion towards the development. What the hell was that? Did somebody just launch a drone or something from the garage? What the fuck was that? of a domestically produced hypersonic missile, with the goal of it being fully fielded by 2030. 90 different companies will be competing in order to deliver a hypersonic ballistic missile design. The European Defense Fund, or EDF, has allocated $1.2 billion with the intention of creating joint EU and NATO long-range fire capabilities specifically in creating hypersonic missiles lot? and counter-drone technology. Norway and Germany have also teamed up to create a joint hypersonic design known as the 3SM Turfing, designed as an anti-ship missile, but it won't be ready until 2035. As part of a larger strategy, Europe and NATO have been forced to address how they would keep supply lines open and operating if war were to break out on their eastern flank. This has led to the establishment of new land corridors, also known as ground lines of communications, which are large-scale multinational routes that are predetermined for moving troops from a naval port of entry all the way to the Russian and Ukrainian border. The goal in establishing these land corridors is to reduce the time and paperwork it takes to move soldiers from one nation to another. As of now, arriving militaries still have to operate within the framework of a host nation's legal jurisdiction, and this causes issues when the goal is to get to the front lines as fast as possible. One way NATO and European partners are trying to make fighting together a bit smoother is increasing both the frequency and size of their training exercises. One of these is Steadfast Defender, a yearly multinational training exercise that began in 2021. The focus of these exercises is rapid deployment of soldiers and equipment from their home bases to conflict hotspots farther east. Steadfast Defender 2024 was the largest military exercise in Europe since the Cold War, which involved 90,000 active military personnel from all 32 NATO countries. It saw the deployment of over 50 different naval vessels, 80 aircraft, and 1,100 combat vehicles. Because it's unrealistic for each country in Europe to fund an entirely flushed-out military that has the latest and greatest across the board, responsibilities have mostly been shared, with each country specializing in one or two areas. For example, Norway... Mm, interesting, right? <sighs> Yeah, the, the, all this has been ramping up. But when it comes to like anti-ship weapons, like why are they spending money to make them when America already has it, right? Can they just buy from America as part of NATO? Well, it's not how it works, right? But then NATO's like, what is it? I forgot the name of that. Basically, it's sink any aircraft carrier or anything like that. 
basically attacking a hull or something just like splitting it in two or something instant uh you know like instant damage and just drowning the whole thing right so 1.2 billion dollars they're like spending creating this kind of like a, a you know weapons and things right for air weapons or missiles and shit is that a lot because military like is 1 billion anything for military i don't know just to just uh, just some like a b b2 bomb or a b21 whatever cost like a billion or something just one piece right again there might be an outlier but still like a billion is that anything in military talk he has conducted international training in arctic warfare since 2006 known as nordic response and specializes in fighting in cold harsh conditions and training other countries in how to do it as well Estonia specializes in cybersecurity. Due to its proximity to Russia, it and the rest of Balkan states are subject to frequent cyber attacks from foreign actors. This led to the founding of NATO's head of cyber operations in Estonia's capital of Tallinn, and it regularly conducts research and development in the relatively new domain of cyber. Other specializations like increased airfields for allied air forces or multinational aerial refueling operations have been implemented across Europe in order to help share the load of collective defense. Recent reports show that NATO is only able to defend about 5% of its own airspace, leaving the vast majority of it uncontested. This has led to a focus on increasing a multi-layered air defense network, specifically around coastal areas. These include American Patriot and French SAMT batteries. Germany is currently leading an effort known as European Sky Shield Initiative, which is currently seeking out to develop a long-range air defense system specifically to defend against ballistic missiles. Basically anti-nuke thing. Like how ages is probably, or it's different, I don't know. But yeah, Germany like trying to do that engineering hub of the planet, like they could be successful, right? Of course, it wouldn't be a discussion on World War III without talking about the possibility of nuclear warfare. The use of nuclear bombs has been a constant talking point since the breakout of the war in Ukraine. Currently, the United Kingdom and France are the only two European countries with their own arsenal with the UK owning about 225 warheads and the French with 290. However, the United States holds roughly 100 B-61 nukes across Netherlands, Germany, Italy and Turkey. The B-61s are smaller tactical nukes designed to hit high payoff military targets such as ports or naval strike groups. They're designed to be dropped from aircraft onto a target and can be carried by any of Europe's new ports right don't you like mother of all bomb and things like that right which can take out like a port or some size like that why do you need small tactical nuke i mean nuke if you use it like take out multiple block type of size type of way it makes sense right i don't know like docks and like strategic places you don't need nukes for that i don't know two f-35s if given the green light by the united states with that said, Russia still sports the world's largest nuclear arsenal, with over 4,000 various warheads, vastly outnumbering the number of munitions held inside of Europe. Poland has requested that some of Americans' tactical nukes be held inside Poland, so that it would serve as a greater deterrent closer to the Russian border. This was done after Russia confirmed that a number of nuclear warheads were transferred across the border into Belarus and to the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad. These decisions are still up in the air and would bring about serious threats of provocation from Russia. But the idea of Euronuke lives on. Whether or not nukes are once again back on the table, or if the war in Ukraine will spread west is yet to be seen. There are no signs of the invasion slowing down, and political relations continue to deteriorate between Europe and Russia. NATO's rearmament is a hopeful deterrence, but at the very least, they'll be more ready if and when the time comes. At least, they'll be. Yep, there you go. Uh, Europe is preparing for war.
I don't know about nukes, but yeah, I don't think they'll Europe would increase nukes because basically they have America. They could just like borrow from there. How Poland wants, right? Like how Russia is putting in Belarus. That kind of makes sense. But yeah, that's some intense situation, right? I mean, do you need to put nukes in Poland just to deter them? Poland is part of like NATO already, right? So threat is already there, like regardless of like nukes are in po Poland or not, right? America can strike from any place, right? A submarine at Atlantic, nuclear submarine is enough to like attack any place in Russia, right? Uh, I don't know. So yeah, US doesn't really need something like that. They have like nuclear trial and things. But yeah, that is interesting. All right, well, that was why Europe is preparing for war, but I don't know what you think. Like, yeah, all the things we kind of know, like, it's slowly intensifying. Who knows where it's going to end up? Well, let's hope things die down. I don't know, right? Because it's very easy for a small fire to become a big one, especially in the global stage. We have seen that in the past where smaller wars usually enough, peop enough countries like interest alliance or f fear alliance and like becomes a global war it's very easy to do look at covid how easy it was to spread around the planet war would be much faster than that right so let's hope like it doesn't become global issue but yeah right i'll see you next time